This is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf, and it's springtime now. The turf is growing pretty well in a lot of, a lot of parts of the country. Uh, so we're not seeing a lot of activity going on out in the field right now. A lot of people are airifying and uh, getting things prepped up in the spring. So I want to take a little bit of time to go over some uh, chemistry factors, uh, some issues about how to uh, use the uh, periodic table a little bit, uh, talk some about uh, moles, believe it or not, uh, valence, and a little bit of that stuff and uh, get a little background uh, information going out there. So uh, if you don't like chemistry, you're not going to like this video. But if you, uh, if you want a little bit of a review on a few of those factors, uh, such as uh, Avogadro's number, uh, what a mole is, uh, equivalent weights, this will be a nice little video to give you a bit of a review. The first uh, factor I want to talk about is Avogadro's number. And this is a, a number which is uh, very important in doing calculations with uh, chemistry. And it is basically 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's the, that's the number itself. I'm not gonna, going to go into the derivation of that number, but what it means is that one gram molecular weight of any element or compound or molecule uh, will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. For example, if we look at the periodic chart, for something like hydrogen, the gram molecular weight of hydrogen is one. That means one gram of hydrogen will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now we have a shorthand term for that, uh, that number also, and that's called a mole. So one mole of an element, uh, such as hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen would be six, contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and it would weigh one gram. Similarly, something like water, which has two hydrogens that weigh one gram per mole, and water, uh, which, and, and oxygen, which weighs 16 grams per mole, if you add those two together, you would have H2O being 18 grams per mole. And that 18 grams would contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Now you can see how that that's a handy number because uh, when we have a mole of one product, we can see how it's going to interact with a mole of another uh, material. For example, with the, with the water, it's uh, two hydrogens and one oxygen that, that interact together. Uh, another factor that we want to um, take into account would be something like uh, called valence. And this is basically the charge or the that those particular atoms will have under certain conditions. And if you look on your periodic table, there will be a number uh, listed as the valence. For example, uh, oxygen has a valence of um, minus two. That means that it tends to pull electrons away from other materials and it has a charge of minus two frequently in, in reactions. Hydrogen, on the other hand, has a charge of plus one. So we'll see that we have two hydrogens and one oxygen together making water and the charges balance out. So let's review just quickly. We've got Avogadro's number, which is the number of molecules in a gram molecular weight of any element. And you can find the gram molecular weight of the elements on your periodic table of the elements. We also have valence, which sort of gives us an idea of how many charges a particular element will bring into a, an inter, a relationship or into a, into a chemical reaction. Uh, and those will vary depending on the type of circumstances. But for us, we, we generally use the, the most common charges that are shown in your, periodic, uh, in your periodic table. Now, when we're trying to uh, figure out how these things are going to interact, for example, in, in a soil solution system, where we want to displace sodium and want to add calcium into it, there's another measurement that we uh, talk about, and those are milliequivalents uh, per gram of soil or milliequivalents per liter of water. Now those numbers uh, are one one thousandth, a milli would be one one thousandth of an equivalent weight per liter. Now one of the factors with equivalent weight is that it takes into account the number of charges that are going to be delivered. So the equivalent weight of, a, of an element such as sodium, which has one plus charge on it, typically it loses an electron so it has a one uh, positive charge associated with that element, its equivalent weight will be exactly the same as its gram molecular weight. So 23 grams of sodium will deliver a one milli will deliver one equivalent weight of sodium. Now elements like calcium which tend to lose two electrons uh, and we're talking about 
the movement of these electrons being the reactions that are taking place, uh, it tends to lose uh, two electrons, so it has a uh, positive charge of two. And if we're uh, talking about the gram equivalent weight of calcium, we have to take into account that each calcium atom delivers two charges. So the gram molecular weight of calcium being 40, but the equivalent weight of calcium ions would be 20. So you divide by the valence, that would be two. Well, if you're still here, uh, you watched the video all the way through, uh, that's probably a little bit of a struggle getting through some of that information. But we're gonna periodically uh, produce some of these basic uh, chemistry videos, get a little bit in more detail uh, on some of the factors of uh, reading a soil report. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, pH in upcoming videos, and you'll need some of this background information. So uh, thanks for uh, watching the video, and we hope you uh, enjoyed this little review.